Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of the Million Pound Mission Podcast. It's your buddy, Adam, the PhD, the previously heavy dude, and this is episode number 228, The Hormone Fix, with my friend, Dr. Anna Kabeka, and I'm excited to dive into the info with Anna, but first, I just wanted to give you guys a quick heads up that you have been heard. I had somebody that reached out to me that uh, sent an email that was kind of like a brick over the top of the head. And she's like, listen, Adam, I love your podcast. I'm really psyched to work with you. Like, I want you to be my coach. I have no idea where in the hell to start. You have too many things. Your website is confusing. Uh, All these things you have going on, I don't know where to start. Message heard loud and clear, my friend. So uh, I have overhauled, I have Marie Kondo tidied up my website and my offers. So that is just a simple three-step process. Each step is free. And that's the best way, in my opinion, for free to launch your transformation journey, to really reclaim control of your transformation journey. So just head on over to millionpoundmission.com. Let me know what you think. Step one, step two, step three. They're free. Let's get going. All right. So I hope you like that. And again, message heard loud and clear. I always love hearing from you guys. Feel free to send me messages on uh, Instagram at Million Pound Mission. Send me a DM. And I've really been staying tight with my policy. I I love to send back video messages, voice messages, really personalize it to let you know that you've been heard. So reach out on Instagram and let me know what you think. All right, ladies, this one is for you because I... I, I know that many of you struggle with, you know, just the frustration of feeling like you're a slave to your hormones and like they always seem to be sabotaging you in your journey to achieve optimal wellness and you just can't seem to get things squared away. All the coaching calls that I'm doing, this is a topic that keeps coming up and obviously I am not like an expert in female hormones. So... Uh, Today, I am bringing in an absolute dynamo in this area, and she is going to give us some great strategies to help out. Now, Dr. Anna Kabeka is an Emory University-trained gynecologist and women's health expert, and she was actually diagnosed with early menopause at age 38. So she was obviously devastated by this, and she went out just to find the absolute best answers and healing concepts around this and succeeded in reversing her own menopause. How awesome is that? Now, she is now a triple board certified menopause and hormone expert. She is internationally acclaimed for her work in gynecology, integrative medicine, and anti-aging medicine. And she just knocked it out of the park with this episode. An amazing interview. Uh, We talk about where women are getting really confused around the conversation about their hormones. We talk about the main culprits of hormone imbalance. We talk about some key steps to naturally balance our hormones. That was super interesting. And even more interesting, her unique approach to the ketogenic diet that is helping women balance their hormones because a lot of women fear the ketogenic diet because of, oh, it'll it'll mess up my my hormone cycle. It'll throw me out of whack. So really, really interesting. I know you're going to love Dr. Anna Kabeka. Uh, She's just so personable. Uh, We had a great conversation. You're going to love it, so let's dive in. Without further ado, here's episode number 228, The Hormone Fix, with Dr. Anna Kabeka. All right, Dr. Anna, thank you so much for being here on The Million Pound Mission. How are you doing today, my friend? I am great. Great to be here with you, Adam. Well, I love your information. I love your energy. I love the way that you teach, and I'm so excited to share your story and your mission with The Million Pound Mission community. And I feel like it's a good place to maybe start off with your own journey of self-discovery and how you became uh, such an impactful influencer in the health space. So let's start with your own journey. Thank you. Uh, Well, you know, I I triple board certified, so I trained in gynecology and obstetrics. And then as part of my own journey and not having the answers and struggling with initially um, early menopause at age 38, I also was over 240 pounds, suffering from post-trauma and stress and had significant amount of hair loss. I mean, I was looking for answers and just... um, and just looking to find them through through all modalities. I always say I do not discriminate against healing modalities if they work. <laughs> right, right. And so that was part of my journey. And as a result of that, I was able to um, 
reverse my menopause at 38, become pregnant with my miracle child at age 41. And she now is 11 years old today. So she's 11 year old, years old today. And it is just a pleasure. So I'm 53 this year with an 11 year old. So older moms out there, you know, we get it right. Oh my gosh. They keep us young and make us old at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's amazing right there. And uh, let's, let's kind of dive a little bit deeper on that. I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions out there. We just kind of, we just accept what society tells us about aging and, and hormones and what's supposed to happen and menopause and all this. And you just said you reversed menopause and had a child. So let's talk about some of the common misconceptions that people are tripping over out there. Yeah. Like my understanding too, when I was given this diagnosis by my esteemed colleagues as well as looking at the lab numbers in my face, right. Um, and the ultrasound reports, I, I did my own ultrasounds too, but then my repro endo did my ultrasound. He's like, mm -mm, there's no ovarian response with the highest doses of injectable medications. I mean, we don't think that's reversible, right? We just think, okay, you know, we, we just don't think that. But now that I've been in practice and I, I used what I learned to heal myself to help you now tens of thousands of other women, that just opened up a uh, amazing, the body, to me, brought into awareness the body's amazing capacity to heal itself and for us to reverse disease. No matter what you're diagnosed with, no matter what you're labeled with, no matter where we are right now, what we're struggling with, we can reverse that and feel healthier. And, and certainly weight loss is a part of that, but the other stuff, the quality of life, quality of relationships, the magnetism and energy that we bring into a room because we're on fire, right? We're passionate. We love our lives and the people in our lives. That's what, you know, I, I get so passionate about because when I see health restored in the body, in the mind, in the spirit, and in the relationships, that is, you know, that's what I'm going for. And that is just like, the stories are tear jerking, are awe inspiring and give everyone hope. And so, so that was part of my journey, Adam. And then it continued because at age 48, Again, I hadn't been done learning my lessons. Apparently, I always say God's had a hand in my life, and there were more lessons I needed to to learn. And so, um, as a result of post trauma, um, you know, I talk about stress and oxytocin, cortisol connection, these really important hormones that are important for our life and our quality of life. And I talk about the disconnect of these hormones. And so, as a as a result of post traumatic stress and chronic everyday stress. Um, even though I got my body physically healthy, the other parts weren't healthy. I, my relationship ended in divorce and I just started struggling again. We had toxic mold issues. There were hurricanes. I mean, just name it. Right. So at 48, I went into menopause again and your community will really resonate with this. What happened to me has happened to, you know, thousands of other women and that is despite not doing anything different, the numbers on the scale started to increase again. So if your listeners, anyone listening out there can resonate with that. And, and, you know, especially if you've lost weight and kept it off and you see those numbers start crawling. I mean, I didn't know when would I be over, I might hit 300 next time. Right. Yeah. So that was fear inspiring. And that's when I really got in, got into keto and making keto healthy for us for hormone balance. So the keto green, hence keto alkaline component of my diet that I talk about in my book, The Hormone Fix. Yeah, and I want to dive deep on The Hormone Fix because everything you just mentioned, mainly, you know, I, I mentioned to you earlier that my audience is very largely female between the ages of 30 and 70. And these are the women that are feeling like they're trapped on this like slow hormonal death march that society tells them like, no, nope, you've had your, your best days are behind you. Sorry. And I see the sadness and this, the, the giving into that perceived fate and you are bringing hope to the situation. And so let's, let's dive in a little bit on how we can start to reverse these, these signs of menopause and, and take control over our hormones and rebalance and fix. So let, let's start walking down that path a little bit. Yeah. And I do, I want to hit on that because I know the fear factor. We just sponsored a sur survey that looked at 2000 women ages 30 to 60. And the three fears about getting older are number one, the inability to take care of ourselves, having to be cared for by someone else. Number two, loss of mobility. And number three, brain fog. 
brain fog. I am telling you that through hormonal balance, we can fix this. Adam, I remember my own life when it, you know, I was so depressed, I would cry before opening my eyes in the morning. I remember putting my feet on the floor and it hurt. I remember like, you know, just not being able to focus, being irritable and, um, and losing, essentially losing control of my life, losing my edge. And I will tell anyone who's listening, I'm a 53 year old woman now in the best health of my life. My hemoglobin A1C is 4.8 when it used to be 5.6 and 7 and diabetes on both sides of my family. And I'm in the best relationships in my life. And not only with my family, with my girls and with my employees, and I'm running a seven figure business going from near financial bankruptcy. So I will tell you these practices and principles that I put in my book, The Hormone Fix, it's about 25% diet and the lifestyle components. And that those make a huge difference. That combination does work. And, um, you know, and, and that's a big thing that I want. I want our listeners to know, and it's not just for women, it is for men too. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty inspiring. On my Amazon book page for The Hormone Fix, there's a video that one of my clients, um, Chris, put up, and he's lost 55 pounds since June doing the Keto Green Way and just how it's transformed his life, too. So women, we have to do it for ourselves. Our men will follow along with us, and they'll get great results, too. Yeah, that's that's super inspiring. And with, uh, you know, keto is a hot topic, obviously, and you know, I've had a lot of keto experts and I really am intrigued by your take on alkalinity and, and the keto green diet. Because alkaline nutrition is something that had a big part in my own hundred pound weight loss. I was really looking at that balance. I was doing the strips and, and, and so, and keto kind of was almost the finisher to help me get to my most lean and muscular level. So I like the idea of being able to combine these two things. So Let's talk a little bit about the ins and the outs of Keto Green and what that looks like. Yeah, and you were doing it, Adam. I'm so proud of you. That is awesome because it's key. Checking your urine pH is a little thing that we can do on a daily basis several times during the day to look and see how is what we're eating and how we're living because it's not just food that makes us alkaline, urinary pH alkaline. So, you know, how that's affecting our body. That's self-discovery. I call it like putting on your Nancy Drew or your Hardy Boy, right? And, And figuring out what's working, being able to discern what's working for you because everyone has a different food sensitivity. Everyone has different, you know, lifestyle environment and toxins they're up against. And so figuring that out and seeing how that affects our physiology is really powerful. And so that's what, you know, in functional medicine that, you know, going from gynecology and obstetrics to studying functional medicine and, and becoming a hormone expert, then certifying in, um, integrative medicine, as well as anti-aging and regenerative medicine, you know, one thing we talk about is detoxification, healthy detoxification to support liver detox. And that's something I saw in my medical practice too. And, and what that, you know, in order for us to release toxins safely, we have to have those alkalinizers on board, those antioxidants on board to help encapsulate the toxic molecule and eliminate it safely. So constipation's our enemy because we're recirculating estrogen, we're recirculating toxins. We have got to work on elimination. That's part of detoxification. So checking urinary pH is just an easy, inexpensive way to do that. And, and so when I started in my late 40s, as I was at that 48-year-old just struggling watching the scale go up and thinking, okay, it's not going to stop. Every time I try to do keto or try to put my patients in the perimenopause on keto, they would feel irritable, anxious. And they would just say, you know, Dr. Ann, I don't like how I feel. I'm like, I get it. I called it going keto crazy. And that is not a place to be with a young child. (laughs) Yeah. And just irritable, not in yourself, on edge. And, you know, it wasn't, it didn't feel the peace, the calm that I want to have in my life. And I wanted to understand what was happening. So I started checking my urinary pH again. I'd always done that, but left that off. And I was acidic, acidic, urine pH, five or less, five or less. I don't know if you experienced that when you started going into ketosis, but it's a definite phenomenon. So add in the low carbohydrate grains, the, you know, kale, the chard, the beet grains are so good. And, um, 
cruciferous vegetables for hormone detoxification, the herbs and spices that are so alkalinizing and detoxifying too, add that into your daily routine and all of a sudden your urine pH comes up which we know is a marker of good health and decreased risk of diabetes and heart disease, and then push into ketosis, get into that fat burning stage safely as well. Your body is more happy to release the fat at that point. And, um, and it feels, the way it feels, I mean, if you experience this, getting into ketosis and alkaline at the same time, you know, red and green on the strips, the urine strips, that's what, it's like Christmas. It's energized enlightenment. It just feels so good. Right. Yeah. And I think we might want to explain for the audience uh, the the acidity versus alkalinity. Some people may not may not totally understand that. But uh, so why like what's happening to our body? What what where does our body want to be on that scale? And what happens if we shift either direction? Yeah, and this is where some people have come in, uh, influencers, and said, oh, there's the alkaline myth because the blood pH never changes. Well, that's not true. The blood pH does change, and it but. Our body is designed to keep the blood exactly pretty much at a 7.4, slightly alkaline level. And what blood are we tasting? Because, you know, um, venous blood is different than arterial blood. So blood straight from the heart, alkaline. We check as a surgeon or in the emergency room, a client came in crashing. I would put a needle in their artery and draw out arterial blood to do an arterial blood gas. And that blood gas, we want to see that around 7.4, a little bit higher, a little bit lower, very, very sick situation. That is our body will rob Peter to pay Paul to keep our blood at that slightly alkaline pH. And that's very important to understand. So if we're not getting the minerals, the nutrients in, our body will get them. They'll get them from our bone, from our muscles, from our jaw lines, <laughs> you know? And, and so that acidity, we're, acidity, I always think of acidity, think of a city, industrial, you know, a, a smog, fog, in, you know, very much indoor living and very artificial. Think of alkalinity like the Amazon, being out in nature, greens, you know, sunshine, earth, you know, the earth's energy, and right. we get a lot more than vitamin D from the sun. So if you think of alkalinity that way, nature versus city, you know, nature life versus city life, and we need that balance, 80% alkaline, 20% acidic. But sadly, you know, if we're doing mostly acidic, 80% acidic, which is actually the case in so many clients, especially who are struggling with weight loss resistance and hormone imbalance, we've got to flip that scale around to empower our body. And different areas of our body have different pHs. So arterial blood gas, 7.4. Vaginal pH, slightly acidic. Stomach, slightly acidic. Urine, urinary bladder should be slightly alkaline. Um, what else? Skin, slightly acidic. So different areas of the body have different pHs. And that, that's important because the bacteria that we need as our protective barrier are ideal in certain, in certain environments and pHs as well. And that's part of keeping healthy. So what I was really fascinated by as I, as I got into this and I started looking at how can, because this I love this story. I had a client, one of our clients in Magic Menopause uh, illustrated this a situation really well. She said she kept trying to eat green and, and she's, you know, working hard and eating green. And yet she was continuing to be acidic, acidic, acidic. And then she just Friday night went out with friends, had a couple glasses of wine, laughed, enjoyed herself, you know, was not perfect on her diet and came the next morning, alkaline, alkaline all day. Wow. Oxytocin, right? Decreased cortisol. Cortisol actually decreases our urinary pH by affecting the mineral corticoid receptors. And I think that's just, you know, that just blows my mind how nature is. And, um, and I think it's important that we do as much to get out in nature. And I've seen your pictures, like you're out in nature a lot. You yeah. really like that. And that's an important aspect of healing that can't come in a pill bottle. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. So, have to incorporate. so, uh, that's probably one of the best and most thorough descriptions of what alkalinity means and why it's good for you. So I appreciate that. I knew that you would bring that kind of knowledge. And I feel like you don't hear people talk about alkalinity, you know, and that's something, like I said, it was one of the key things for my initial, uh, you know, results and, in, in kickstarting my momentum. So you, d you take the alkalinity and then we start to fold in the ketogenic principles because the keto d diet in itself 
there's a lot of meat, there's a lot of processed foods, there's a lot of you know dairy and cheese, and those are all they tend to be on the acidic scale. So what does keto green look like and how are you adjusting it to keep the alkalinity going in the right direction? Yeah. And I want to talk about this because I know there's some keto carnivores out there, et cetera. Let me tell you, men with healthy levels of testosterone are totally different beasts than women. Women have estrogen storage mode. We do not do well on that type of diet. (laughs) Men and women are different, y'all, right? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) You know, we need we need to remember that. And um, and so it's also like the, you know, the fun ketogenic diet that's you see the bacon and butter kind of concepts. Right. But the concept of ketogenesis, getting your body into fat burning mode is what I'm going for with my program and my plan. So definitely we want those healthy fats. Hormones are derived from fats. If you're having any hormone imbalance symptoms, if you, you know, I will say if you hate your husband only two weeks out of the month, then you've got hormone imbalance issues. So, <laughs> it, you know, we have to rebalance our hormones. So um, healthy fats are, I mean, hormones are derived from fats. So we need healthy fats. And by that, I mean avocados, salmon, olive oil, nuts, seeds, and good rotation of those things. And healthy protein. And the source does matter because if our animal we're eating has been shot up with antibiotic, shot up with hormones, has eaten grains with mycotoxins, we're getting that and that affects our hormones. And so we really need to consider the source. So still, I do ketogenic diet with low red meat. But yet, you know, it's not, it, I don't villainize any food source. You've got the variety in your life. I have patients all over the world who are able to incorporate the principles of the keto green plate, which is what you had asked me. And I got off on a tangent. Oh, no. I mean, that, that's, I mean, it's important though, because people will really get their mind when they get into keto. Like one of the main mistakes I see is people are like, cheese, like you said, cheese and bacon, bacon and butter. You know, I get, the, you know, they, they almost get too fired up and focused on that. Instead of the the principle of actually being healthy and quality, you know, high quality sourced foods, foods that haven't been shot up with antibiotics and hormones, like that that plays an important role in how we age and, and our overall health in general. So, super important point there. So, with uh, m- maybe walk us through like a typical day when you're on keto greens. Like, what do your meals look like? Are you are you incorporating anything like intermittent fasting or anything like that? Are you just instinctively eating? What does your uh, daily meal plan look like? Yeah. And uh, with my keto green, so the concept for us is getting into ketosis and preferably using our fat stores versus the fat we're eating for fuel. And so, so intermittent fasting is key. It's really important for women, especially over 40, certainly over 50, that we intermittent fast. Research has shown that if we keep even 12.5 hours between dinner and breakfast, um, there's a a significantly reduced risk of breast cancer. So we can extrapolate those findings. And that is really powerful. And, And just knowing that just makes all the sense in the world. Also, the timing of our meals and not a grazing window. I don't believe in, okay, eat in this four hour window and you're, or six hour window and you're eating during this entire time. Like, what is that? Is not. Like, when did that come about? You know, okay. I, I, I don't get, it sounds delightful. I'll, I'll take a few days of that too. But, um, but really we need to keep create insulin sensitivity. So in my book, I talk about these really powerful hormones, insulin, cortisol, and oxytocin as being the major drivers that affect us and help us restore estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, and DHEA. So it's a really key concept. And I think that's, what's really novel about this, but, um, physicians, functional med, you know, experts, influencers are in a hundred percent agreement with these concepts. And so in my typical day of my keto green day, well, um, besides that, I told you last night, my daughter made her own birthday cake. I'm like in the middle of book launch. She <laughs> wants to make her cake. I'm like, make your cake. So, so it was beautiful. But, um, uh, so this morning it was, it was smoked salmon with capers and onions, um, and cucumber with some sauteed greens. That was our uh, breakfast this morning and, uh, lunch. I'm trying to even remember what dinner was yesterday. 
Um, oh, dinner yesterday was, I call it a poor man's stew. My oldest daughter, Brittany, cooked, and she made a saute of, of eggplant, a small amount of butternut squash, and all kinds of vegetables. We call it ratatouille, like a keto green ratatouille, because it's, you know, we don't put very, there's a little bit of butternut squash as far as the starch, but everything basically what's left in the fridge, we cook into a saute or bake it in the oven. And so that was our dinner. And that's a perfect dinner, a little bit higher carbs in the evening meal meal, keep really low carbs, breakfast and lunch. And then lunch is typically either a keto green shake, a keto green smoothie and, or a keto green salad. So I'll explain my keto green smoothie. My favorite one is a quarter to a half of an avocado, avocado in your smoothie. I put everything in my Nutribullet. Let me, it makes it so smooth. Yeah. Um, a teaspoon usually of MCT oil, uh, some sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds are two of my favorite seeds. And that adds nuts and protein. I also add my keto green protein powder, which is a vegan protein powder that source that has some MCT in it, as well as some nut proteins. So that's really good to add that addition. And again, a handful of whatever greens I have in the fridge. So some broccoli sprouts, love to put those in there, really good and breast healthy. And baby kale, water, typically I use water. I don't use um, milk or dairy or creams, any of that, and blend that up. And, um, and that's my beautiful keto green smoothie for the morning, rich, fulfilling and yeah. nourishing and yeah. easily digestible. So what, as far as like your, your timing of, of your foods, like with the intermittent fasting, I get a ton of questions about intermittent fasting and I've got a follow-up question after you answer this one. So be ready. Uh, so <laughs> what, what does the timing look like for you on a typical day of when your first, your, your first meal is, and then the last meal of the day? Yeah. So, um, I like to eat my dinner meal by five to 6 PM. It works for my daughter and my schedule, even in basketball season, those are later days we're eating right at six, but we try to eat, you know, try to eat by six because the research shows that anything we eat after seven o'clock, we will secrete 50 to 70% more insulin women. That means going straight to storage mode. Now, I come from a life as an obstetrician working 24-7 and sometimes not coming home for days. One meal and coffee all day was my routine. I was really unhealthy and really overweight. So something that, you know, from my own experience was like, oh, well, that didn't work. Yeah. And eating late at night is is the bane of our existence. Plus, we're not going to get a good night's sleep. And when our body should be anti aging us and regener, you know, youth euthanizing, you know, making us more youthful, um, you know, we're digesting, we're working, and that is not healthy. That is not healthy for a good night's sleep. So anyone who does not wake up feeling rested, you got to bring dinner to an earlier earlier time frame and and cut out you know certainly cut out the alcohol if it's in there so i try we try to eat by 5 to 6 p.m in the evening and then break fast typically by 8 to 9 a.m nice so on a daily basis sundays are longer fast we fast till after church and um it's like the treat like i bribe my kids you go to church you get to go to brunch we have a nice brunch and um and that's a that's a good thing too you gotta when you have kids you have got to get creative i feel you i feel you i've got my my daughter i told you my daughter's home sick today and she's upstairs with the with the babysitter aka the ipad and uh she's she's doing that while we do the interview so i, I feel you i feel yes you. yeah there's there are certain things we there are workarounds that we come up with very creatively exactly which re reminds me for moms out there too because there's there was a great book i had a title of a great book that i had come across called the sneaky chef have you ever heard of that one no no so this is this brilliant woman who figured out how to put vegetables into absolutely everything. I mean, even like, um, you know, uh, dusting like a fried chickens, essentially with a nut crumb and greens and parsley and herbs all in that crumb. Spaghetti sauce, like with like all the greens blended in there. And, and, you know, she does like, I just think of that all the time, that creative when my daughter will eat sushi, she'll eat raw oysters. But when she has friends over, they're like, you know, where's the chips? I'm like, well, let me make you something really, really good. And they love my cooking. So That's awesome. Yeah. It's fun to kind of sneak things in there that make them feel good afterwards too. Oh yeah. hundred percent. And you feel better as a parent that you're helping to nourish your children. Like Almost nothing feels better to me than knowing that my children are eating good, healthy food. Uh, I just feel like I'm investing in them, even though, you know, a little bit of time put in there, maybe a little bit more expensive, but, you know, it's, it's your kids. You know, that's, that's the whole point. 
It's it's maybe and it's actually uh, did the numbers because looking at, you know, we think it's more expensive to eat healthier, but it's not. We'll have less cravings. We're healthier overall. And it's not even the long term investment in our health. In the short term, we see that difference. Satisfied, no snacking, not craving, not getting big gulps and all these other things. Yep. My daughter, you know, I mean, she's able to eat anything she wants with her friends and stuff, but there's in the house, it's what we have in the house. Yep. And so I think it's 100 percent worth it. And the sooner, the better. I agree. I agree. Now, I want to dive back into hormones a little bit because one of the you know, danger zones that a lot of people that I talk to, a lot of my podcast listeners run into that are female, they switch to keto and or they switch to an intermittent fasting cycle and they it, it messes up their menstrual cycle and they freak out and they stop. All right. I've had several yeah. people like my first couple of weeks, you know, it thing you know things really get me messed up and they're like okay i can't do this because some of them are like just getting married getting ready to you know start a family and they do not want to jack with the hormones so what's your advice around that when somebody starts keto or they start intermittent fasting and then things are a little bit messed up with the menstrual cycle yeah well i think it's a really good point and and certainly i hear it too and for me it was like having no menstrual cycle and starting having menses again yeah. right and that that happened twice a reversed menopause twice right and um and so that's a really profound situation when we get our body producing its own hormones cycling responding and uh you know balancing healthfully itself so if you're anytime you do something different you can expect a shift in your body's chemistry so don't freak out but the first thing i want to know is it a healthy shift or an unhealthy shift right because we can have unhealthy very little periods or unhealthy you know um longer delayed periods and all of a sudden we're having like a cleansing period, getting out anything that might be stored up in the uterus, let's say a heavier than normal period. I commonly hear that. I'm like, yes. You know, like I, I think in my own mind as a gynecologist, we may be reducing her risk of endometrial cancer. This is a good thing. And so as a gynecologist, I would also do a pelvic ultrasound, right? Let's just look and see that everything's okay. Not a problem. Do that. It's worth, I love pelvic ultrasounds, harmless test. If you have a reason to do them that your insurance will cover, absolutely 100% do them. They are good. Look at the ovaries, look at the uterus, look at everything else while they're there, right? So I'm a big fan of that. But also in my book, The Hormone Fix, I talk about key testing I want people to know. I want people to know their own test numbers like they know the number on their scale. And I also want them to look at their symptoms and follow that over time. So and in my 10-day program, we have the 10-day breeze through mastopause um, Breeze Through Menopause Masterclass, which we have women in their 30s through 70s going through. It's just a fun picture. If you guys look at that picture, lady in front of the fridge with her bathrobe open and um, fan blowing, it's just a cutie picture. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we want to breeze through any hormonal transition we're having. But in that, you know, we did a cert, we did online because it's all online. We had them enter in their hormone review of system. Um, we call it hormone toxicity questionnaire that I created. Enter in at the beginning and enter the results 10 days later at the completion of the program. 97% of people had improvement, over 57% reduction reduction in symptom scores in 10 days. So that's that's the benefit that we get. So look and see what's the overall. Don't let one thing that's kind of maybe rewiring or maybe resetting, getting into a circadian balance, don't let that throw you off. If you're doing keto green, right, keto healthy. So, um, so that's a, you know, want to test, don't guess, you know, what gets measured gets managed and don't, you know, don't stop doing something that could potentially being beneficial. But remember what I said, even I experienced severe acidity and severe side effects to keto when I wasn't doing it and checking that my urine pH was getting and staying above seven, above, you know, that alkaline, just slightly alkaline range, seven to eight. And that made all the difference and that still makes all the difference in the world to me. Nice. And correct me if I'm wrong, but do you have uh, alkaline testing on your website? Do you have uh, things that you can do that with? Okay. So we'll put that link in the, yeah. in the, uh, the show, the show notes and on the blog. That way you guys have access to that. Cause it's really fascinating. You get, you get the strips, uh, you urinate on the strips. Is, okay. Is there any advice as far as when you should be doing that to test your alkalinity first thing in the morning, you know, midday, uh, any, any advice around that? 
I like because it's it's inexpensive to test, right? And it gives you an idea of what's going on. I like definitely in the morning, your first morning void. Let's see how that is. And once to twice at least in the middle of the day. And sometimes if I've gone off, like I've been stressful traveling, I come back, I'm acidic. I'm going to test like four, five, six times a day till I can really see, okay, well, what's, you know, am I making progress here? Because it's so important that I, I boost that up. So, and then also before bedtime. So at least you know, morning, midday, and before bedtime. And you get to see, track it. You get to see what's going on with your body. You get to see how your body's responding to your environment. And it's important to know that like one thing that I tell clients, it's not just, right? It's not just about what we eat. Diets fail because it's not just about what we eat. It's about when we eat, where we eat, who are we eating with, right? What's our attitude? Like saying grace before a meal, are we appreciating our food? What's the physiology we bring to the table to enjoy this this food? Are we grateful for this food? And, and we need to like come from that place and that shifts your physiology. Right. And just like you said there, like you can actually shift your physiology. You've uh, reversed menopause twice. I mean, that's just, I know that there are women listening to this going, Oh my God, I, like, this is exactly what I needed to hear. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's why, it's why you're here. And that's why I'm so excited to have this conversation. Now I know that I also have a lot of husbands, spouses, partners of women that are going through menopause or having hormone imbalance issues. Any advice for us as people that want to, you know, obviously my advice would be like, just share the epi- this episode. Uh, but if we want to have that conversation, you know, that's a touchy subject of, you know, maybe it hasn't been brought up yet. Maybe we're just noticing, like you said, maybe my wife is angry with me two weeks out, out of every month. And, you know, how do I bridge that gap and have that conversation and suggest that it may be, because I can't just go, hey, it may be your hormones talking you know, that never goes good. <laughs> never a good answer. So any advice from you on, on, around that? Oh man, it just brings uh, a couple years back. I wrote a blog post and, and, and posted on Facebook guys, what not to say, what not to say to your woman, <laughs> you just, you, you definitely have, have hit that one for sure. So, and, and that is so true. So what we can only do is get ourselves healthy and do the things, provide an environment in which we ourselves are becoming healthy and encourage those along with us, right? And so maybe it's like, uh, I heard about this great book, The Hormone Fix, by this amazing, awesome doctor, Dr. Anna Kabeca. And guys, you got to listen to this podcast with this duo here, Adam. Oh my gosh. You know, and it's like, I learned these things, you know, you can say something like this, I've heard about this and I'm going to do, I'm going to try to start doing these things. What do you think about that? You know, and then you magnetize the results you want for yourself. You magnetize that into the to the people around you. And that's really critical. In this study, in this survey of 2000 women aged 30 to 60, it's just, it's just was now released in the New York Post on Friday. Um, yes. And what the research showed is that 71% of women with menopausal symptoms recognized that their symptoms started around age 36. Wow. 36. The symptoms are starting earlier than we've ever noticed before. So the mood swings, the PMS, the fighting. And I have a client. I love her. She's a fellow doc, a fellow doctor colleague, right? Doesn't matter how educated we are. We don't get our bodies. It doesn't matter. And um, she and I were walking, jogging. She likes to jog. I like to walk. And she was just saying, you know, she, I've just, she just was telling me how she was flying off the handle with her husband and, you know, this situation, that situation. And I said, well, where in your menstrual cycle were you? Every time, every time the week before her period or the few days before her period starts, like, I don't know, she's like, the, I don't know why I'm worried about the laundry basket, you know, being blah, 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 when I never worry about it. I'm like, where in your cycle were you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and just being a aware of that. Can say that. Yeah, yeah. A girlfriend can say that. A guy cannot. Yeah, and, and one of the the best strategies that I've been using with people that are in, in just touchy situations when they're trying to talk to a partner or spouse. Um, you know, so in this situation, if you notice that maybe your wife may be experiencing some hormonal imbalance issues and she's you know maybe getting a little rowdy with you, don't bring it up in that moment. 
you know, wait till the Good waters advice. are calm and then bring up a conversation, have a conversation, not an argument and, and make it about everybody is, is getting healthy together. Focus on that. That's been a great strategy for myself and for people that I, that I tried to uh, help influence positively. So bring it up when the waters are nice and calm. That way an argument doesn't ensue. That's good. Because that'll, that'll increase your acidity right there. Just having an argument. You're going out, out of alkalinity because that's stress. Absolutely. That is really good advice. Never in the moment, right? Get yeah. your physiology calm, be peaceful, be well-fed, well-nourished, right? And um, and also uh, your partner, you know, make sure they've eaten, they're rested. It's time to talk. You set up a safe time to talk and, and you approach it with love and gratitude and respect. These are all the things that I love about you. What I'm noticing is during this time that, you know, certain things bother you that typically wouldn't, how can I help you? Yep. And I think if you approach it that way, a very interesting. I had a conversation with Ariel Garten. She is the creator of the Muse headband. Are you familiar with her? Yeah. And it's a ECG feedback. What I didn't know, it came up in our conversation, is that she had a traumatic brain injury. Wow. And so she was noticing that her symptoms were better before her period started. Like the the brain fog, the fatigue, you know, all those symptoms seem to get better. And so that led her to use cyclic progesterone to understand that that was happening because she had a post-traumatic brain injury. Progesterone is neuroprotective. What's happening as we're going through menopause and perimenopause, we're dropping levels of progesterone. So often we need to add that back on. So progesterone is a great antidepressant a great anti-anxiety medication. I use herbs and natural ingredients like in my Mighty Maca Plus to help us support our adrenals, to help us combat stress, to help us detoxify and alkalinize our body. Because when I was suffering, there wasn't anything I could write or could be written for me on a prescription pad that would help me. Our doctor's bags were empty. So I had to create these natural solutions. So that's how I came about doing this. And then, you know, uh, self-experimentation, experimentation on my family, friends, and and patients. And, and now, you know, we really have beautiful, beautiful results with help empowering the body to heal itself, to rebalance, to restore and, and that's powerful. It's important. We talk about this behavior. Physiology drives behavior. So it's a vulnerable point because we think I should just think myself better. It doesn't work that way. Right. Right. Yeah. That's the, I, I tell people like I'm, I'm big into the law of attraction and like the, the secret and all that. But I tell people you can't spell attraction without action. You have to, you know, get, set your mindset, set your intention and then act on that and, and, and show up for your goals. So that's uh, something I believe in deeply. Now, uh, a, con a new concept that I want to pick your brain about, uh, in one of my recent uh, podcast interviews, uh, Allie Miller brought up the topic of carb cycling uh, with, in, in sync with your menstrual cycle. So any thoughts on the benefits of that? If, if you'd ever do a, a little bit of a, a, carb, a carb bump up, have a few more carbs, maybe do a sweet potato or something like that, on uh, depending on where you're at in your menstrual cycle. Any thoughts there? Yeah, absolutely. 100% agree. And Allie Miller is one sharp cookie too. And absolutely. And something really witnessed with menstruation, right? Like when are we listening, when we are able to listen to what our body needs, it's important to understand, is this a need or a want? And, and, and fulfill that need right? Fulfill that need because your body is craving something. It's the, the extra minerals, the nutrients, the iron, you know, that piece of steak, you know, right before or during menstruation, you know, what is it that your body is craving? The carbs, I think we should also with the keto green state, I talk about cycling, like, you know, maybe we're 10% feasting you know, and everyone likes a good party, 10% feasting with good healthy foods, right? But you may be going a little overboard here and there every once in a while or, or off, off program. That's okay. Cycling, keep, um, you know, keep, you know, metabolic, um, flexibility going. I think that's really important, but also listening to your body. So before your menstruation, I really do think there's that higher need for serotonin. So for the carbs, so that helps with PMS symptoms as well. Exactly. Brilliant. So, so you would recommend as they are ramping up, heading towards the start of their, uh, their menstruation, that, that would be the actual, uh, time to, to carve up a little bit uh, as they start that, to see the like PMS symptoms, things like, things like that. Yes. Okay. And, cool. and in the evening for the last meal and in my experience, because also increasing tryptophan helps with a better night's sleep and that can help. So B6 tryptophan containing foods would be ideal during that time. Excellent. Excellent. Now, um, with your 
you know, with your keto greens, obviously this is, um, it's a different way of thinking. I really like it. Like I, it's, it's, I love the combination of, of what you've done here. A lot of keto people, a lot of keto influencers are very anti vegetable, right? And you've mentioned like the carnivore people, uh, you know, I don't, I don't eat vegetables. My, the animals I eat eat vegetables, you know, that sort of thing. So how do we unwind that a little bit and, and, and get over that? Cause that's not necessarily something that I personally believe in. Like I eat vegetables. Uh, but when somebody comes to you with that argument or whatever, uh, that you can't do vegetables and keto, uh, obviously you're doing it. So, uh, what's the difference with your mindset around that? So I always look to history and I think, okay, what in history has worked? What traditions have developed and, and how, you know, have the population survived based on that? So when we think keto, one of the big things that used to come up all the time were the Inuits in Alaska, right? That they're eating just meat, right? They're eating fat all the time. They're eating just meat, but that's not true, Adam. That's not true at all. When I looked at what they're eating, they're drinking bone broth. That's minerals. Yeah. That's bone minerals, that's magnesium, that's calcium, that's boron, that's phosphate, that's sodium. Those are, you know, potassium. Those are minerals in that bone broth, hence the alkaline cofactor. So they were keto green too. They figured out how to supplement their only sources by getting leaching the minerals out of bone. I thought that was fabulous. Yeah. 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 So that was a light bulb moment. Yeah. And are you doing or recommending any tracking as far as like calories, macro tracking, anything like that? Or are you uh, just more of an, an instinctive eating and make sure that we're more focused on the nutrients and, and putting the right thing in our body? I have several clients that do track and it's not something, and they sometimes get angry at me for not tracking or not giving exactly, like exactly what should I eat? Exactly right, how right, much right. should I eat? Exactly. I'm like, everyone's different. You know, I'm five foot eight and you know, I have a daughter who's five foot three, five foot four, totally different build. We can't eat the same stuff. Why would yeah. I give us the same menu? I give a guideline yeah. and a thing that helps, you know, sometimes for women, especially when they're going keto, they're like dousing in that tablespoon of MCT oil. It, wait, you know, doing Weight Watchers Point and recognizing fruits are not free. Fruits are not free items. Like anyone out there who's done Weight Watchers, the point method can help you just quantify a little bit without like getting you know, the calories and you just think I want to eat the most nutritious food, but what do I really need for myself? And sometimes just keeping points for a while, just to see your volume and kind of get an eye opening. But one tablespoon of MCT oil is seven Weight Watchers points, which is like, you know, a, a quarter of your whole day's food for someone who's in their mid fifties and, you know, and, and, um, and so that's something to look at, like yeah. how much are you doing? Because I that was the experience with many women, you know, putting a lot of MCT oil, putting a lot of coconut milk, and sometimes using coconut milk that has, you know, sweeteners in it. So you kind of look at it so you get, you know, track macros for a little bit, but really think what are the micros I'm getting, yeah. right? Am I getting the greens? Am I getting the alkalinizers? And regardless of that, what effect is it having on my physiology? Is my urine pH up? Do I feel better? Are my symptom scores going down? So it, very individualized approach is what I coach in, um, in this, in the book, The Hormone Fix, and in my online programs. Now, uh, we've mentioned a couple of your resources. The book obviously is amazing. I want people to check it out. Um, I also, uh, we want to make sure there it is. We want to make sure that we, uh, get people connected to you and your information because your website, you've got great resources, like straight up, you know, I, I, I interview a lot of people and sometimes the websites are okay, but yours is excellent as far as just, there's a lot of great info, you know, great takeaways that you can pull out of that. So, uh, how do people get connected to you? Uh, you know, social media, all that stuff. If people just want to really get into your world. Where do they go? Yeah, I'd love that. I welcome you all into my world too. Um, easy website, dranna.com, like drana, D-R-A-N-N-A.com. And my Facebook group, my Keto Green Community Group, it's called Keto Green Community with Dr. Anna Kabeca. Really lively group, really lively group. A lot of good experienced women in there have been doing it now for a while. And, and that's a great place. I'm on Instagram too. We're doing some fun quotes and some recipes there as well. So excellent. Welcome. Now I'll link, I'll put those links in the show notes and on the blog. Now, Dr. Anna, I love to inspire my audience, but I also like to put them into action. So we need to give them a little bit of homework as we uh, sign off here today. So let's say that there's, there's 
a community of females that are out there and they understand that they may be experiencing some hormone imbalance issues. Maybe they want to try to reverse menopause like you've done. You've inspired them. They're going to get your book. They're going to join your Facebook community. They're going to plug in. But what's like the next steps after that? Where do they start to unravel this and get into action? Yeah, I really do. It's just like, think, okay, what's my next one step? And I would say, you know, like, Get, take one of the quizzes, you know, get one of the quizzes, take one of the quizzes, because that just tells you where you're at now. So many of my clients would say, I didn't realize how bad I was feeling till I started feeling good again. And it's important to objectively measure that as much as possible. And we can say, okay, there's a reason I'm doing these things. I remember I was thinking about it this morning. Um, one of my old clients, I saw her and she said, Dr. Anna, you know, I, I never felt better than I did when I was under your care. And I think it's just the accountability and getting in that group is the second thing. So I'm giving you two things. Be in, um, you know, do your analysis, take your quiz, see your what, where you're at right now, and then get in good community to help you keep you accountable. And that really moves the needle. Yep. Yep. Dr. Anna, thank you so much. Uh, I The thing that I love about your way of, of teaching and what you're doing is that, like I said at the beginning, I see so many females that are just accepting this fate that, that, yeah. that they are going down this path and it's a kind of a dark path and they just don't feel good. They don't feel like themselves. And you're somebody that is shining a light in a different direction that's giving these people hope. And I believe that the power to give somebody hope and reignite that spark is huge. So I greatly appreciate you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Likewise. Thanks for all you're doing. All right, everybody. You know what time it is. I want you to get out there, get into action and own it. Every meal, every workout, every day. I will see you on the next episode. Hey, thanks for hanging out after the episode, the after party of the Million Pound Mission. How awesome is Dr. Anna? My goodness. Uh, I put all of her connection links in the show notes. Just click on that and have at it and dig into her info. It is amazing. Speaking of amazing info, I want to make sure you guys are aware of one of the big errors that I'm seeing with people that I talk to when I do free, uh, reach out calls and things like that. People are randomly taking action and they are randomly getting results. And I feel like it's super important to be working from a rock solid game plan and I want to help you set that up and set yourself up for success. Uh, just head on over to millionpoundmission.com. You'll see the three free steps I have there set up to help you reclaim control over your transformation journey, reclaiming control over your health. Step one is downloading my transformation battle plan workbook. It is 100% free. It is 1 million percent awesome. And it's the number one tool that I have in my arsenal. I'm giving that to you for free. So do yourself a favor, go to millionpoundmission.com, go to step one, download that workbook, and thank me later. I will see you next week.